Hi everyone, I'm Julia. And I'm Philip. Today we want to talk to you about Naval Nuclear Power School. There isn't a ton of information out there about it, and obviously we cannot tell you about what we've learned at the power school because it will all be confidential. However, we would like to share some of your insight with you, such as schedule, what to bring, what not to bring to school, traffic, where to live, final exam, the process, and what happens if you don't pass a final exam, and finally, graduation. So if you are a student who is about to come to a new school, hopefully this can give you a little bit more guidance than what we got. Yeah, it was, it was a shock. There's nothing in the U.S. that I know of that I've ever experienced that's anywhere mm -hmm. close to this. Probably Julia is the only one who can kind of relate to it. It's a little bit similar to uh, the middle school I went through in China. It's very regimented. It's basically all just pure memorization. You kind of don't even have to understand the material. You just have to remember it. Yeah, don't let them catch you saying that, though. Yes, don't. You have to understand it. I mean, like, understanding definitely help you to memorize it. But there is no group project. There is nothing that's hands-on. There's a model room tour, but you're just seeing it. You're still trying to remember everything. And... Also very shocking, all the grades are publicly posted. So you have a week, you have a test in the end of every week, and whatever score you receive and your ranking in the class is posted publicly so everyone can see. Uh, that was very surprising. Yeah, it wasn't fun for a lot of people, uh, especially if you were down towards the bottom and constantly mm -hmm. stressing about, oh, am I going to pass this test? Uh, and then if you do fail, there's like a little gray box around mm -hmm. your score. It's not not very fun, but yeah. Right. With that, let's go ahead and start with the schedule. We have our little uh, schedule card that they give mm -hmm. us that kind of helps to explain uh, what it's like. So on these cards, Julia has little stickers on hers. Each right. little block that she has a sticker on on her card represents one week. Mm -hmm. And it's two sided. So basically, you see all the different colors. There are different courses that you'll be taking, and every Thursday we'll like do a better picture of it. Every Thursday, if you see a black box, that would be the test day. Yeah, so every week you have a mm -hmm. two-hour test usually. Towards the end, they bump it up to three-hour tests, mm -hmm. and then the final exam is four hours. Right, yeah, it's also like really fun little tradition that every time every time you finish a week, uh, you put a little sticker on it, so it's a little bit of motivation to be like, oh, we're finally done with it. Yeah, and it's a big deal when you get halfway and you finally flip the card over and start looking right. at the other side. So it's great. actually we have a halfway party. And it's also a new school tradition that when you, it's called like or card flipping party when you flip the schedule and go to the other side. Yay, three months in, three months to go. Right. Yeah. Uh, so basically, as you can see on the little color block, so for each course or each color, you have three weeks and some of the longer subjects, such as electrical engineering, you have four sets of three week courses. And then every set, you have a test in the end of the three week period. In the end, after the fourth set, so you already have this for what, 12 weeks? You have your double E, which is your electrical engineering final. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like we can kind of say that like, oh, it's three weeks. It's not that big a deal. But compared to college, like these three weeks is approximately, I'd say pretty close, if not maybe a little less than one semester in each of these three weeks. Right. Of courses that we're doing. For example, just using double E again. So double E one, we learned all about DC. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, DC power. And then the second part, we learn about AC power. The third part, we learn about like dials, BJT, MOSFET, all the like, you know, little dials. Yeah. I don't know how to explain. And fourth period, we learn how DC converts to AC and AC converts to DC and battery. So it's yeah. very compact. Uh, our friends who are engineers in college said it's definitely basically equivalent to a whole semester worth of material. Again, there is no lab, no um, no essays. You just learn, memorize, and test. Yep. Every day you're going in and taking three classes, anywhere from two to three hours, typically three separate blocks back to back of a class. So you go sit in there in the morning at seven o'clock, do three hours of double E electrical engineering, then do another sometimes three hours of another subject like mm -hmm. I mean, heat transfer or something mm -hmm. uh, and then goes straight into sometimes you'd have another two hours of a class in the afternoon after a 45 minute lunch break uh, and then you study for like another four or five hours after that because you have a test coming up in a few days 
Right, and even if you were engineering major before, you might not be as prepared as you think because they teach everything a very specific way and on the test, they only want you to do it in the way they taught you. Um, so I guess it's good news for people like us who are not engineering major, um, but it's yeah. very challenging. But yeah, with that, uh, there are some things you can bring to kind of help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we highly recommend, I don't know if it's super common in other schools, but this school, everyone has one, is a boogie board. Mm -hmm. So basically, again, you have so much memorization. You can write here and you can clear it with a little yeah, button down here. It's like there. those little things you had as a kid where you can like move the little things to draw lines on the screen and you shake it to clear it, but way more advanced than that. Oh yeah, obviously you can't bring your phone or any technology into the building besides a calculator like this. The... Right, and this is the only allowed calculator that you can buy and use. You cannot bring a graphic calculator, like they will take that away. I mean, they'll give it back to you, but you're not allowed to use that on yeah. my test. It's the most advanced calculator you can bring in. You can yeah. bring in dumber calculators per se, but yeah. this is the best you'll get. Right. TI-36X Pro. Right. And another thing that is a must have is a confidential stamp. Uh, you can get that on Amazon at the next anywhere. It just, you, you have to stamp your paper that says confidential. And it is a big deal if you don't stamp your paper or if yeah. you try to throw your paper that is stamped confidential without shredding it uh, or properly dispose it. Yep, no, definitely. But yeah, yeah. with that. Oh, and another thing, right? Oh. So here used to be a badge. You had to scanning it out every day. Um, so right, normally five to five to five p.m. five a.m. to five p.m. is like a normal work day. You scan in and out. We highly recommend this little poly yeah, thing. A little extension <laughs> makes it easier, so you don't have to take it on and off all the time. Yeah. Oh, also clear lunchbox. They will search your lunchbox every time you go in and go out. If you have one of those insulated non-clear lunchbox, it might take up to 30 seconds twice a day for like the guard to search it. And everyone behind you trying to scan into the building have to wait for the guard to search your lunchbox. Yeah. So highly recommend a clear lunchbox so it can literally just show them and then... Yeah, you can get that on Amazon on. for like 10 bucks. Super easy. Right. Um, but yeah, with that, the traffic going there every day mm -hmm. can be very dependent on where you live. So these mm -hmm. two kind of tie in together. Where we live is super awesome. It's like less than 10 minutes away on a good day, uh, which is really convenient. Uh, literally just roll out of bed. Sometimes we get out of bed after six in the morning, even though we had to be there before seven. Uh, don't recommend that, but you know, we still made it work sometimes. Right. Uh, but yeah. Live closer. Mm -hmm. Like some people might think, oh, Charleston is such an awesome area. I want to yeah. live downtown. I want to live in Daniel Island. Like, yes, those are great areas, but like, you know, like, Charleston is like a peninsula, so it's all connected by bridges. Accident happens all the time on a bridge. Do you really want to get stuck on a bridge for like over an hour, like multiple times a week, going back and forth from work? Yeah, especially after working 12 plus hour days, the last thing you want to do is sit in traffic for like 45 minutes and then yeah. have to go back in in the morning a few hours later. Yeah. It's crazy. But right. yeah, some people still choose to live downtown, which is over a half an hour commute away one way. That's the best case scenario. I know a lot of people spend 45 to an hour yeah. on commute each way. Yeah. Um, it just, it really adds up. And I know like you say, oh, on the weekend, everything I want to do is right there. Downtown Charleston is really not that big. So like I, we think it's a lot better if you live closer mm -hmm. and then go do things on the weekend rather than live so far away and may or may not even do things on the weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh... Also, we have a bunch of roommates that live with us, which is super convenient. We'll do a separate video, but mm -hmm. we are looking for some potential renters. So short-term renters. Yeah, short-term for sure. Because yeah. we did a bunch of renovations. We're going to be selling this place when we leave it. But in case you're coming to new school and you see this video, let us know. Right. But that'll be a separate video. We can talk about the process. We bought the house, renovated and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. All right. Let's talk about new school final exam. So after six weeks of learning, um, oh, also if you're not a technical major in college or if you're slow or if your grades in college weren't good enough, you had to do an extra three weeks of preschool before new school started. Mm -hmm. It's honestly the best thing ever. You really prepare you for new school. You give you a huge leg up to people who are engineering major or people who are fresh out of college. Yeah. So um, 
yeah don't say no to preschool is a blessing in disguise yep definitely but yeah with that the final exam the four mm -hmm. hour one that i mentioned is on everything literally anything that you've learned prior to that that they've taught you in class is fair mm -hmm. game right yeah. uh, it's four hours and if you pass it they will tell us a grade the, the day of the test so we took our comp on the tuesday Tuesday afternoon around 4 p.m. We already know our grade. Again, grades are publicly posted. You know exactly who passed with what or who didn't pass with a little yeah. grade box. Um, it's crazy. Thankfully, all of our class actually passed somehow. Um, all of our friends, but sometimes they're... Yeah, sometimes... It can be way worse. Yeah, it should be 15% who don't pass. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't pass, um, you have to do a recomp. Yeah. So that will be a week from your final to do the to do the final retake and therefore you miss graduation so yeah. they send out graduation invitation to your family and friends for you um, about a month before you take the final exam and if you find out you don't pass you actually have to like go back and tell your family like hey sorry even though we just ask you for a driver's license or social security number like now you cannot come anymore yeah typically you're going to be telling them that that tuesday night and you're graduating in like two days at that point so mm -hmm. if they're flying anywhere that's highly unfortunate right yeah so if you're kind of like borderlining which there's nothing wrong with it like it's a really challenging program so even if you're not doing super well don't be down on yourself you're already doing an extremely extremely hard program yeah but um yeah if you're on the borderline on whether or not you pass or not, or even if you're just a little bit uncertain, I say don't add the extra stress on yourself by inviting everyone in your family. Wait till after you finish your final exam and then invite them. Pay a little bit extra for, for flight ticket, but the mental anguish is not worth it. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I was down towards the bottom and I was able to pass still. So if you put in that work the last couple of weeks and just really grind it out and mm -hmm put in every day on the weekend, what you're doing on the week, it's it's possible to do. Yeah, but if you don't pass, again, it's not a big deal. You study again, they probably give you what, eight hour days, mandatory study hours, yeah. and you just study for a whole week, um, and then you do a retest. Um, and then if you still don't pass, you do an oral board, at that point, 95% of the people will pass. Yeah. Um, so actually the overall passing rate is pretty high. But that's also because we have such a hard screening process to even just to get be accepted by the program. Yeah, for sure. All of our technical interviews we did beforehand uh, are supposed to be an indicator of if you can actually do the program or not. Right. And hopefully you can get one of yeah, this, yeah, yeah. which is your graduation certificate. Mm -hmm. And when you finally walk the stage, um, this is what's gonna say inside you shake hand with like an admiral or someone. Mm. Right. And if you your grade is over three six, you graduate with honor. I had like a three five nine, mm. so therefore Shame. I graduated with distinction. Uh, and for distinction is three point six to three point four. And if you're below three point four each your graduation certificate just doesn't say anything. But again, it doesn't matter at, at all. I just graduated and I'm just as good as her. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. You genuinely doesn't matter if you graduate number one or you just passed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, also number one of Submariners, number one of SWO and number one of Civilian, they each get their own like little plaque saying number one SWO or like number one Submariner, like number one Civilian. So if you're a SWO or a Civilian or Submariner, if you're super driven, yeah. want to be the number one. Um, Go for it. But yeah, SWOs are surface warfare and that's what we both are. So we'll be on an aircraft carrier instead of down under in a submarine. Right. Um, and then after nuke school, you have a two week long break. Mm -hmm. um, after the two week long break, we start prototype. Yeah, so that's the school we're currently going to have a little bit more time. We actually get weekends off. Uh, it's kind of frowned upon to go in in the weekends at this school. You can make a separate video talking about that once we learn more. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, this so far has been a way better experience for me. For some people, it's different. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it so far. First weekend. <laughs> normally if you like new school if you really struggled at new school then you like prototype more vice versa if you really struggled 
if you did really well at new school, you not like prototype as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's uh, great posting again, doing some actual content for mm -hmm. all these people who have subscribed. We have this little notification clock that tells us like how many people have subscribed and it's been crazy to see we didn't expect this at all we're over a thousand at this point uh so yeah we'll see what uh, where this actually goes not really sure yet i think a lot of uh it is our friends and family so uh hi if you're watching this <laughs> but mm, yeah, yeah anyways if you have any questions comments concerns leave a leave a little comment below we'll mm -hmm. get back to you and if you're about to go through new school or if you're going through new school and if you're struggling, it is okay. We struggled so much. It's so tough and so challenging. You're not alone. I yeah. promise you. Hang in there. If I can this. do it, you can too.